at the commencement of proceedings today, this Board of Inquiry was called upon to resolve two points in limine. <clears throat> These points were recorded in a letter dated the 28th of April 2016, written by the attorneys acting on behalf of the National Commissioner. The two preliminary points are worded as follows. <coughs> One, whether the evidence leaders are entitled to call witnesses who did not testify at the Farnham Commission of Inquiry. And two, whether the evidence leaders are entitled to rely on evidence which occurred after the Farnham Commission of Inquiry had been concluded such as the representations which were made by the National Commissioner to the President. Initially, in the statement of defense prepared and filed by <coughs> a counsel appearing on behalf of the National Commissioner, an attitude was adopted that no further witnesses at all should be called to testify before this commission. <coughs> In paragraph 55, the following is stated, and I quote, it may however be that one of the parties requires a particular witness to be called despite that that witness testified at the Farlem Commission, but the calling of such a witness should be limited to clarification in respect of his or her evidence at, at the Farlem Commission, not the rehashing of the evidence he or she has already led. It is, however, impermissible for the evidence leaders to call witnesses who were at all relevant times available to testify at the Farnham Commission, but were not called, or to call witnesses who testified at the Farnham Commission in order to bolster the evidence which they have already led at the Farnham Commission, bearing in mind that the terms of reference are based on the findings of the Farnham Commission, are not on the inadequacies of the evidence that was before the Farnham Commission. Any attempt by the evidence leaders to call the witnesses as they have alluded to in their statement of case will be opposed." Unquote. During argument this morning before us, uh, Mr. Mokari, appearing for the National Commissioner, however, <coughs> adopted a different attitude, saying that <coughs> the evidence leaders would be entitled to call witnesses. <coughs> He are ever limited their right to call witnesses to comply with certain procedural requirements that was agreed to prior between the parties in a strategy meeting that related to the question of whether the witnesses had made statements under oath and whether these statements under oath had been supplied to the legal team for the National Commissioner. <coughs> In my view, the concession made by Mr. Mukari that the evidence leaders would be entitled to call witnesses to testify is a correct concession. <coughs> it is now common cause that this inquiry is in the nature of a disciplinary inquiry or a disciplinary hearing between an employer and an employee. At such disciplinary hearings, it is common cause that witnesses could be called by the employer as well as the employee. It would therefore be absurd to suggest that in this particular inquiry, the evidence leaders would not be entitled to call witnesses. 
The witnesses, however, have to be relevant. So the touchstone <coughs> of whether a witness should testify will be determined by the relevance of that testimony. The relevance of such testimony, obviously, will be <coughs> determined by referring to the terms of reference of this particular inquiry. <coughs> Just give me that terms of reference that you have. It's not here. Right, Judge Niels Klaassen there speaking on the relevance of witness testimony in relation to what he called this the disciplinary hearing into uh, VFPF's fitness to hold office. Uh, he is uh, delivering his ruling on whether or not new witnesses and evidence can be introduced and those of course were the two arguments that we heard this morning from the evidence leaders and from the advocate representing Ria Piecha. So we will have more for you on that coming up in our later bulletins as to what the outcome of uh, that ruling will be. Stay with us, we'll take a short break. More coming. In paragraph two of his uh, schedule, <coughs> and it reads as follows. The Board of Inquiry shall inquire into whether 2.1 the National Commissioner acting together with other leadership of the South African Police Service or alone misled the Commission by concealing that it had made the decision to implement a tactical option taken at the National Management Forum meeting on or about 15 August 2012. 2.2. The decision of the Commissioner to implement a tactical option or she ought reasonably have to have foreseen the tragic and catastrophic consequences which ensued. 2.3, the remarks by the National Commissioner at the SAPS parade on 17 August 2012 would have been understood to be an unqualified endorsement of the police action and thereby have the consequences of undermining, frustrating or otherwise impeding the work of the Commission. 2.4, the report prepared by the National Commissioner for the President of the Republic on 16 August 2012 and the media statement subsequently issued on 17 August 2012 was deliberately amended to conceal the fact that there was two shooting incidents, scene one and scene two, resulting in misleading the public that all the deaths had occurred at scene one, which arose out of members of the SAPS having to defend themselves from an advancing mass. 2.5, the overall testimony by the National Commissioner at the Commission was in keeping with the office which she holds and the discharge of her duties commensurate therewith. I need say nothing more regarding the first <coughs> point raised by Mr. Jami for the evidence leaders. It would seem to us that the discussion and the concession made by Mr. Mukari would result in the answer to the first question to be that the evidence leaders would be entitled to call witnesses but that that witness's evidence will have to be tested at the relevant time when they are called as to their relevance to the <coughs> terms of reference. Let me then deal with the second point, and that is the point whether the evidence leaders would be entitled to refer to <coughs> instances ex post facto the Fahlen Commission, 
where the National Commissioner is concerned. Mr. Bukhari was at pains to argue that the proper interpretation of the last <coughs> terms of reference 2.5 indicate clearly that any reference to subsequent conduct by the National Commissioner would be <coughs> inadmissible and beyond the terms of reference of this inquiry. However, <coughs> in the statement of defense, the counsel for the National Commissioner itself admitted that <coughs> the terms of reference in paragraph 2.5 is vague and unsubstantiated. Paragraph 45 of the Statement of Defense, the following is said, and I quote, the term of reference relating to the overall testimony by the National Commissioner at the Commission being not in keeping with the office she holds is vague and unsubstantiated. The evidence relied upon is not identified, nor is it explained how she could have made herself guilty of misconduct by virtue of the evidence that she gave at the Foreign Commission of Inquiry, unquote. <coughs> it stands to reason that <coughs> the representations made to the, pri to the President by the National Commission after <coughs> the Farnham Commission had completed is relevant in the sense that in those representations she sought to explain her conduct and her evidence and the evidence that was led at the Commission in order to <coughs> establish her absence of any guilt. In doing so, in that particular representation to the president, she therefore incorporated her conduct at the hearing before the Foreign Commission. <coughs> it would therefore be absurd to suggest that her statements in that representation is of no consequence and irrelevant to these proceedings. <coughs> Uh, explanation to the President related to her very conduct at the hearing of the Foreign Commission and in our view therefore is relevant for the decision that has to be made by this Board of Inquiry. <coughs> we are therefore of the view that the evidence leaders would also be entitled to refer to such conduct <coughs> after the conclusion of the Farland Commission, which has a direct relationship with her conduct at the hearing of the Farland Commission itself. <coughs> it goes without saying that if she was to testify at this Board of Inquiry, concerning her conduct um, at the Farland Commission, which flies in the face of any subsequent conduct where she explained her conduct, that that would be relevant to consider her creditworthiness and her fitness to hold office. For those reasons, <coughs> we are therefore of the view that in regard to the second point, the answer must be in the affirmative that the evidence leaders would be entitled to refer in this Board of Inquiry to matters which occurred ex post facto but have a direct relationship to what occurred during the Farland Commission. In conclusion, it may just be said that anything positive or negative that occurred in the conduct of the National Commission post 
the Farnham Commission, which is entirely irrelevant to that commission, would not be permitted in this board of inquiry. There must be a direct relationship between such conduct ex post facto to the actual hearing and her conduct during the hearing. And for that reason, we make a finding or a ruling in regard to the second point that the evidence leaders would be entitled to refer that to. As the board pleases. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Now that we've made that ruling, um, Mr. Jamie, what is the next step? Judge, um, the next step was we had lined up a witness for today, um, just Abundante, and the witness is present. Um, it is, I'm, and I'm sorry, I'm informed that you should have each of you a document titled Evidence Leaders Bundle. Yes. That has been put. There's a big the bundle to that effect, yeah. Yes. Is this the bundle you're referring to? Yes. Thank you. A copy has been given to our colleagues. Could I ask that this be labeled Exhibit B? <clears throat> this will then be Exhibit B. Court pleases. Judge, um, what this document is, is <coughs> a compilation of statements, and in some cases affidavits, together with um, associated documentation. And in most cases, you would see that um, there is an exhibit number which is provided, and that would be a reference to the Farnham Commission exhibit numbers. And the witness, that, and, and the purpose of this is to act as a guide of, of the statements or affidavits together with the other documentation we'll rely upon in leading these witnesses, whom we do, whom we do elect to call. And the witness we have at the moment is Mr. Bellani Tadaniani, who is number eight, the, the, the first witness on the second page. He's present, but his first language, and so just to orientate, you, you will find his statement at paginated page 69 yes. of this bundle. We see that. And it's, it's difficult to read because it's been copied repeatedly, I think. Well, it's not only difficult, it's almost illegible. Um, th that is why what we intend doing is having Mr. Tladignani read this into the record and then um, to deal with his evidence that flows therefrom. He has, however, requested uh, me once... With respect, I'm sorry to interrupt you. That would not be sufficient. Um, you will have to ask somebody to retype this in type form because down the line, if we have to refer to it again in two, three or four weeks' time, we may not be able to recall exactly what was written here. So no, no, no. We, uh, I, I beg your pardon, uh, your pardon, Judge. We, we will, and in some cases already it has been done. The, um, yes. The handwritten documents have been transcribed. In yes, please. So we will certainly provide a transcript, but perhaps it would be better to do that once he has read it into the record. But um, he has requested, once we explain the situation to him, um, his first language is Swana. He is what? Swana. Oh, Swana. Swana. Excuse me. Uh, and although he seems, um, obviously, he has written this in English, he would prefer to give his evidence through an interpreter, and we don't have one available this afternoon. Well, how do you propose to solve that problem, Mr. Jamie? We propose to, to, we don't have any other witness for today, Judge. So we propose to, I've asked my attorney and the secretariat between them to arrange for an interpreter, All right. and we intend to call him later this week, with, with your leave. Uh, are, you, are you suggesting that we then adjourn until tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock for um, this witness's interpreter to be obtained and to be ready to proceed at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning? Is that what you're suggesting or not? Not as precisely as that, Judge, because <laughs> I do not have control over the interpretive services that are available. 
Where were you uh, thinking uh, of obtaining the services of an interpreter? Via the, secreta the secretariat or my attorney. Yeah. All right. I personally don't, don't arrange interpreters, Josh. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate that. I Coming from Cape Town, you don't know all the interpreters here, do I you? I don't, I don't, Josh. <laughs> so I, I would like the... It's, we do have witnesses for, for this week, but they're not always going to flow seamlessly from one to the other judge. Subject to what Mr. Mukari has to say, if we were to adjourn until tomorrow morning, then wouldn't that allow you ample time for your attorney or somebody else to transcribe to transcribe these uh, statements, at least this first one that you we, we, certainly, we certainly can have this one transcribed, yeah. yes. And later on the other one as well. Any, any statement in this bundle that's not been transcribed, we will transcribe. Thank you. Um, Chairperson, we, uh, we have no objection as long as then the stand down is to tomorrow morning. And insofar as um, obtaining the services of uh, interpretation is concerned, um, then they should be able to get assistance from the Office of the State Attorney and we also have the Director of Public Prosecutions, the interpreters from court. It's not a difficult thing especially given that Sotswana is, um, is a language that is um, quite well spoken in this area. It should never be a problem. So uh, it will cause no problem if we stand down to tomorrow morning uh, at 10. Anything Sorry, can I, can further I just, you wish to say, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Tadamiani is certainly available tomorrow morning. And yes. subject to what Mr. Makari has said, if the interpreter is available tomorrow, we will start with him at 10. Well, then, I think we shall initially adjourn to 10 o'clock tomorrow morning in the hope that you're ready to proceed then. If not, then I think you should uh, explain to us what the problems are with obtaining the services of an interpreter. Will you do that? I certainly will, Judge. And what we also suggest, uh, Chairperson, is that... Uh, the evidence leaders should not rely on one witness only because they've had an opportunity for eight months to line up their witnesses. So if then you can't um, put this witness first, you must put another witness tomorrow. So it can't be a reason for that because they've had eight months then to do that. And especially given that um, we have not been given even the list of the witnesses and the chronology by which they're going to be called. So if then they can also do that uh, this afternoon and give it to us, then we know that who is the next witness and so on. We're able to prepare accordingly. Thank you. Judge, as I've indicated, the, the availability of witnesses and the practical difficulties in arranging them, on, putting them on standby, shouldn't be underestimated. We are operating from Cape Town and um, not an excuse, but it's an explanation. We are divorced from the situation here. Um, till you made your ruling, the position was we weren't entitled to call any witnesses whatsoever. And that must be factored into the situation. As also the attempts between the parties, which you were apprised of this morning, to actually remove the need to call witnesses by agreement, as in the one with regard to Captain Adria that you heard this morning. So it's not that simple to simply have all these persons lined up. There, at least one of the witnesses, Captain Mulman, has family uh, matters that have taken into Cape Town, and we were told that, and we advised the secretary of that timelessly that she would only be available on the night. Um, so those are the, we, we're operating under various constraints. But subject to all of that, we have no desire to string this out, Judge. We will attempt to have the witnesses that we decide we do want to call in light of your ruling as conveniently lined up as possible. That I can give you my personal undertaking. Would it serve any further purpose for the two legal teams to meet in regard to what witnesses are going to be called uh, to arrive at some kind of an agreement in regard thereto, or would that serve no purpose at this stage. Could I respond first, Judge? Yes. Um, you, you would know that 
I think very reasonably, um, Advocate Makari um, was amenable, and, and th that request was conveyed to you yeah. by the Secretariat, and, and it had the imprimatur of both of us that we were we thought it would make sense precisely to get all of these practical difficulties out of the way to possibly have this ruling today or, or this argument and then a ruling as you've given today and then stand down to next week to have all the witnesses lined up. That was turned down. So under the circumstances, we, we are sort of trying to, as it were, um, reverse engineer the situation to have the witnesses yet in light of the ruling. Um, well, I think that the response by Mr. McCarty will be, you had eight months. No, we've yes. Had, we've, had, we've had since um, 15 minutes ago, Judge. <laughs> In fact, um, Judge, uh, what I would like to um, propose is that um, the evidence leaders should make sure that from the 14 witnesses that they have, this inquiry does not stop at any moment. They should make it uh, uh, the point that they have their witnesses here. If this one is not available at the particular time they have another, then they must have another one ready. And the question of Cape Town it does not even arise because the evidence leaders are instructed by the state attorney Pretoria and they're relying on the state attorney Pretoria. They're not the ones who are running around looking for witnesses. So that cannot be used as an excuse. This inquiry has waited for too long, for eight months. They've had that opportunity so if they can ensure that they ensure that this inquiry, it runs smoothly without the interruptions that they're suggesting. But insofar as the parties talking, we'll continue talking in respect of those witnesses that may not be the necessary to be called. But the impediment here is that we have not been given the witnesses that they are calling. So that's why I'm saying that if they can give us the list of the witnesses that they want to call by this afternoon, we'll be able to sift through and look at the statements and see whether this witness is necessary for him or her to come. They have not given us that. If they can do that this afternoon, then of course, then some of the witnesses may fall away. Will you be able to comply with that request? I we, think it is a request. Uh, we've Mr. already, Damon. well, it sounds like demand, but mm. we, we've already complied with, not, not complied, we've already done what is being requested because they were given the witness bundle and that lists the 14 witnesses together with these statements and any other additional, it's the same document you've got, Judge. Yes. So, th so they have this, this bundle that you've yes. given to us just now. Yes, but, but all that that is, with respect, is it's, it's in order to assist. We're not obliged to provide a document like that because that document, Judge, comes Exhibit directly. Exhibit B. Exhibit B is a direct extract, or at least compilation, yeah. of what is said in our statement of case. And, and the statement um, of case says who we're going to call, depending on what their reaction is. So they've known throughout who the, witness, who the likely witnesses are, subject always to agreement. Well, and we've now gone one step further and given them that document, which actually takes out all the relevant exhibits and puts it in their hands in one document. So I don't know how it can be suggested that yes, we have I, not given them that. Let me just interrupt you there, Mr. McCoy. I mean, you have here something like, I don't know how many witnesses. Uh, um, well, I'm still of the view that neither the board nor Mr. McCoy knows exactly whether you want to call all of these witnesses or only some, and if you want to call only some, then tell us which are those that you are intending to call. We certainly will do that, Judge, and well, s subject to any agreement as well, I indicated I think from the outset. This afternoon should be then used to sort out these preliminary housekeeping issues with regard to the witnesses. And I would ask both counsel to cooperate in this regard and for the sake of the brevity of the entire board of inquiry to come to some agreement in that regard. Yes, um, Chairperson, thank you very much. Um, I understand the ruling that you have made today not to be uh, exonerating the evidence leaders from complying with the agreement which is contained in the minutes, mm -hmm. that when they call that witness, they must show you that they've complied with it. They've given us that statement, it's a statement under oath, and then from there we can test the relevance of that evidence. This bundle which 
has been referred to you, which um, has been extracted from some of the documents in the bigger bundle, which then we have just been given just now, then two, I mean, two minutes before you started handing down your ruling today. Then if you can just flip through it, the first page is a, is a, there is a handwritten statement, and then when you look at it uh, at the end, then we look at the next statement, some are commissioned, some are not commissioned. So they know that they must make sure that in respect of those who are coming to testify, they must show us that they've given us a statement which is commissioned. They can't give us the statements which are not commissioned They say that they've complied. So that's all what I'm saying. But in respect of signing out other things, as soon as they give us the list of who they want to call, then we'll be able to know um, the statements of those people and we'll look at them and we'll be able to engage whether it is necessary for that person to be called or not. It's just as simple as that. I'm sure right, we can well, resolve this. I, I think we let us terminate the discussion now. I wish to prevail on both council to be reasonable in these circumstances and to assist the, the Board of Inquiry in trying to terminate uh, the length of this inquiry as best we can. Okay. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you. Then we'll adjourn until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning.